Welcome to AFI Docs Film Festival presented by at and I'm Michael Lumpkin, the director of AFI Festivals. I want to start by thanking those who support the festival, our presenting sponsor at and all of our many supporters and donors, AFI members, and you, our audience. Thank you for watching. Nation Time Gary is part of the festival's Cinema's Legacy section, and I'd like to thank the supporters of the program, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and the National Endowment for the Arts. We're here today with two men who played critical roles in creating the 1972 National Black Political Convention and the film about that convention, Nation Time Gary. First, Byron Lewis, one of the founders and organizers of the convention, and David Greaves, a member of the film crew for Nation Time Gary, and also the son of the film's director, the great documentarian, William Greaves. Talking with Brian and David today is Louis Masaya, himself a documentary filmmaker and founder of Philadelphia's Scribe Video Center. Thank you all for being here today, and now I'll hand it over to Louis. Thanks so much, Michael. Uh, you know, I, the first time I saw this film, Nation Time Gary, in its entirety, um, was uh, really earlier this year at Princeton, uh, where, where they had a, a, an extraordinary uh, exhibition honoring uh, William Greaves. And my, my feeling on seeing that, that, that film as a documentary filmmaker is that, that this is the, the film that documentary filmmakers are really, that they, they live for. A film when you are called by your community to document moment, to document, to document struggle. It is a documentation it, and it is also history. It's a very important work. I'm really, I really want to know how this film came about. And um, uh, uh, David Greaves, you were camera, cameraman on, on this film, uh, working with, with your father, uh, 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 William Greaves. Uh, how, how did, what brought you and, 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 the, and the Greaves crew to, to, to Gary in, in uh, 1972? Well, um, uh, um, at that point, Mama Mary Baraka had um, come by the office with his, uh, you know, entourage of folks, and um, uh, they and my new father uh, were speaking about it and how it, how it, it could happen, and um, uh, so so that's how that's how how it how it started. And of course, it was always, um, uh, you know, my father said, "Well, you know, how much is is this going to cost?" And I told him, "He's oh no, it'll never cost that much." So, um, and of course we weren't paid to <laughs> that much, but it was um, one of those things where we're gonna do it, it doesn't matter what it costs, you know? So that, that's how we, we just um, came, in, came in into it, you know? Um, Baraka came by, uh, spoke, spoke with dad, and uh, we were on, on, on board. There was nothing else to, uh, to talk about. <laughs> you know, how the, the monies involved were not um, important. The thing was that, we were going to go out there, and uh, we were going going to do it. And 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 Byron Byron Lewis, some 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 other context. So how how did the the, the 1972 uh, uh, Black Political Convention come about? What what yeah what what were the origins? Uh, uh, you're in the film, and you're also one of the, the people that made the the, the the convention happen. How, how what, what what started things off? Racism. That's what brought the film about. But actually, uh, I had met Imamu, which is what I call a Leroy Jones, because he was um, actually, from a cultural point of view, he was a writer, he was a um, poet, but he was also deeply concerned about the Black experience in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I met him in downtown where all the uh, non-working talent was in Greenwich Village, and he was a playwright. And one day he said, Byron, you were born in Newark, right? I said, yes. He said, well, I would like you to have a discussion with me and some other people. And I said, well, that'd be great. I had no idea what it was about. And he told me that he would like to have help to help 
somebody gained an important position in Newark. And that was, they were trying to help elect the first black mayor of Newark, New Jersey. And uh, I had just started Uniworld, which I had only really begun it. And I said, well, you know, I don't know what I can do. He says, well, you're black, aren't you? I said, well, I looked in the mirror this morning, yes. He said, well, this is very important because I think black people need to be in charge of things. And I got involved to help create the, the media, the word of mouth, the people who would vote in Newark. And at that particular time, there wasn't really a lot of media. Uh, you remember something called radio? Well, there were, <laughs> there were black radio stations beginning to pop up. But mostly it was about getting people to vote. And we found that the real communication tools were the barbershops, the beauty parlors, and getting word of mouth. And that word of mouth somehow or other reach mainstream media because there were conditions in Newark that even the white people felt could be improved. So what we did is that we created some radio commercials, we created print ads, we got the local newspapers to run it without charge. And that experience really, uh, it worked. So the first black mayor was um, elected. And as a result of that, I got another call from Imamu. I can't remember, it might have been in the early part of 1972. He said, Byron, I want you to help generate the press, the communication part, because Reverend Jesse Jackson and I want to have a convention. I said, well, that sounds nice. I said, about what? About bringing black people together across the country in one place so that we can make an impression on black life and experience in this country. And I basically said, well, sure. Little did I know how it was big it was gonna be. But it was really a mamu and then meeting with Reverend Jackson, who I got to know very well after that. And uh, we got involved, really, to help stage it in Gary, Indiana. And I never knew where Gary was when we started. But we met um, together with the mayor, Richard Hatcher, at that point. And afterward, it's like, it just took off. I don't really know what happened. But I do know what happened. Mm -hmm. It was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because the truth was that we never had an idea to bring our resources together. And my, my role was merely to get the media to bring the attention of the convention to the outside world. One thing that, uh, uh, that really struck me about this film was in, in some ways it really felt like uh, a documentation of, the, of, of a, a culmination of a movement. Um, and certainly, you know, the, the film is, is, is made in 1972. Uh, it's on the eve really of the, 19, of the 1972 presidential election. And at the, this gathering, we see as you say, Jesse Jackson, you know, the conveners, include, uh, along with Baraka, were um, uh, Honorable uh, Richard Hatcher and Charles, Digg, Charles Diggs of Michigan. Uh, but you have Betty Shabazz, you have Coretta Scott King, you have Queen Mother Moore, you have people from all varieties of sort of black struggle. Uh, were, were, were either of you involved in any of the, the earlier um, uh, really gatherings? I know there was a meeting in Newark, a preparatory meeting in Newark, and I know there was one in Philadelphia that, with the Congress of African People. Were, were either of you involved in, in any of that, or, or, or had you heard about these earlier meetings that led to Gary in 72? 
I heard uh, there were a lot of meetings going on all over the country. Yeah. And I was going to say, well, how are we going to do it? Mm -hmm. That conversation never came up because actually Amamu and Jesse, we have networks, you know, and I guess that's the other thing. Mm -hmm. How all of those people were in Gary, Indiana was a surprise and a mystery to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't recall really knowing about all the other things that were going on. And certainly the involvement of, of Richard Hatcher, uh, who had just been, was really the first um, uh, mayor of a major city. I mean, he was elected maybe a day, a day before Carl Stokes was in Cleveland. Uh, uh, and, and, and a citizen in Newark had been, the, I think, one of the first black mayors. And, and Newark, Newark was, uh, Gibson was a little bit after that, but, but it, it, was, it was Stokes. And, and the reason I know this is that um, I know this as, as, as kind of like, uh, work, I worked on the Eyes on the Prize series, which is how I first met this film. Uh, uh, I never got to see the entire film, but there were excerpts of Nation Time Gary in a film that was directed by uh, Sam Pollard uh, uh, called Ink on a Shuffle No More in the second series of Eyes on the Prize. And while, while we were in, in production, I, I had a chance to see some of the footage, but not, not the full film that's just been released. A question for, 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 for David Greaves. So what, what do you think brought Baraka to William Greaves' doorstep? Who was William Greaves in 1972? Why was he the go, why would he have been the person to go to? Well, um, uh, Dan had been working on a lot, lot of films, obviously, up, up in Canada and had um, uh, gotten his, um, uh, Sort of cut, cut cut his teeth up there at the National Film Film Board of Canada, and we worked his way up from someone who had sort of clean clean the editing room to becoming their senior, senior ed editor, and then he also began to to direct films for them as well. So he had a um, a, re a re reputation when he came down from Canada. I uh, worked for the United States Information a a Agency, and then um, did a lot of film for HEW Health Education and Welfare. So I guess um, he was the go-to guy only because he was the one who was able to um, uh, do, do, uh, do all these films. And he was um, just very, very, how do I put it, aggressive and organized in terms of uh, getting films to, to, to do. You know, he was, um, so I guess uh, his name was out there. And um, now this film was, and I think because there was a black, uh, Black Journal, of course, in 669, <clears throat> when he won, won, won the Emmy, excuse me, <clears throat> and I'm sure that, and that is, as I think about it, that's pro probably the thing that uh, they said, hey, why don't we get him, him to do it? And um, from that point on, my role really was just to, um, you know, budget, the crew, the film, all the, you know, the background stuff um, that was done, and uh, he handled, obviously, all of the um, in, intellectual in, in input for the film. Wow, and and and, and can, are there any moments uh, I, I, uh, d during the, the 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 filming that really come to mind? I'm I'm thinking about that extraordinary speech that Jesse Jackson gives. Oh yes, the Nation Time refrain. Do, do you do you remember that, how that happened? Oh yeah. Well, when Jesse gave gave that speech, he was really at sort of the height of his rhetorical powers, and he gave such a speech that the, um, there was no work that could be done after he, he finished speaking. You know, the place just erupted. And um, the moment for me was that I was watching it from my camera up top, and I saw my father um, filming all, the, all the, these reactions, and he was squish panning and zooming in. And, and then when I got into, into the editing room, um, I went through all the footage, and I said, and then when he came in, he was viewing it, I said, Dad, I cannot find this camera. I can't see, find that roll of film. And he said, there wasn't any film in, in, in the camera. I said, no film. I said, what were you doing? He said, it was such a great shot. I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> so that, <was> a, <laughs> so that, that moment stood out. And then, um, as you say, uh, Richard Roundtree, when he uh, walked out on the stage to that music, the um, young ladies in the audience 
went crazy. It was just amazing. And we, it, was just, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, 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 the, and the, the people, the, the other artists involved with the production, with, with, with Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier, so how, how, when, did, when did you reach out to them and how, how did they become involved in, in the production? Sure. Well, of course, they were um, personal friends of, of, of my father. They had been in the uh, National, um, uh, the American Negro, American Negro Theater together. So mm -hmm. they were like old, old friends. So I guess, Frank, how they, how they became involved was probably, hey, Sydney, you know, <laughs> uh, could you do, do, do this narration, that, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think it was uh, uh, more than that from his, from his standpoint, it was probably a matter of just making a couple, a couple of phone, phone calls and they said, yeah. And they may have been speaking with um, um, Baraka um, as well before that. But um, in terms of um, any narration that they, they, they did or anything mm -hmm. like, uh, like that, that would have been him just uh, calling up and saying, hey, Harry, Sydney, could you do this for me? And that was that. And, and I have to say the writing, which, which is, which is uh, Bill Greaves' writing, is, is yes. an extraordinarily, extraordinarily well written. It's a lyrical, lyrical narration. Mm -hmm. Byron Lewis, so you, you, you have this, uh, the, the Greaves film, film crew, but you also have you know, journalists, media people from all over the world. How, number one, how did you get the word out? And then how did you manage it you know, once everybody came? Well, it was no genius on my part. Um, I'd like to uh, add one thing. Yeah. Oh, your father was involved. Uh, the black community is very small. Yeah. The black creative community was almost non-existent. Everybody knew everybody else. I think Amamu, it wasn't like, oh, can we get him? He was the yeah. one that we all knew. I knew him. And in those days, the fact they were black filmmakers was a unique thing. I, I sort of, my career began in Harlem. And everybody, I, we were the tail end of the uh, Renaissance, but all of the black creative people knew each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was also impressed that you did have Harry and Sidney, and the writing in the Italian was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the real reason is it wasn't that somebody said, oh, let's just try and get your father. Yes. It was a given. That's right. It was a given. And the other thing is that everybody's interest in those days was the same. Because everybody had their own issues. Nobody was working, including me. <laughs> but what I loved when I sort of began was the relationship that Black people have with each other. Mm. And that really became evident during the actual film. Like when the guys or the people from um, Detroit walked out, that was very intriguing to me because mm -hmm. the relationships were broad all the way from east to west, south to north, but it was really Amamu and Jesse, they got all the people they were dying for a chance to change things. Now, for my part, I don't know how it happened, but a lot of white people were wondering if black people could do this. I did the ordinary stuff. You know, it was the, uh, you know, the, uh, the black press was there. And mm. I, I knew most of them from being around forever because there wasn't that much. But there was the white press, there was the BBC. Uh, I didn't do that. Word got out. I don't know how that happened. In my, I never thought about talking to the European press and the European into, uh, uh, international broadcast. That's the miracle. Mm -hmm. How did it all happen? And when we got to Gary, I couldn't believe it because the hotel, there's only one hotel, had a little concern because they had run out of rooms and they weren't sure if all the black people could pay. 
Now this is true. So I remember that we were talking with the Mamu and Jesse the night before and we were having problems. And we also found out, because if you saw in the early shot, how many people from the press were there? Hundreds. Mm -hmm. I never imagined that. So the big issue was how to organize it. But one of the first thing is to find how people could get into the hotel. Again, how small the community is. So Jesse and Amamu were talking and they said, you know, we have to get into the gymnasium tonight. And someone said, um, well, there's a black performer who is performing there and he won't give up his date. And they said, what do you mean he won't give it up? He said, if I have to call my man in uh, uh, President Nixon, so we had to wait until this act was finished, which was at one o'clock in the morning. And the truth was that we had to basically figure out then how we were gonna get everything constructed the night before, because it was gonna start at eight o'clock the next morning. And also where was the money gonna come from? <laughs> so, Jesse calls John Johnson at Ebony Magazine who I think at heart was a Republican at that time, because that was this, the politics were different then. But it was about 12 o'clock at night, he called John Johnson. And Gary is only about an hour from Chicago. Mr. Johnson sent his chauffeur down with $50,000. Hmm. They took it over to the hotel. And the hotel then felt encouraged <laughs> <laughs> to, to allow the black folks to come to the hotel. And also we needed the money so that we could, we could construct the, the, the television structure that you needed to, to be on television to the world. Mm -hmm. So that was really, to me, the interesting part. And it was only because I think it was Jesse who called uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson likes to, liked to stay in the background because if he felt if he was too political, then he couldn't get white advertisers. So my role was sort of in the background, but it was also um, important for me because my company was based on whether I had helped change the attitudes of the white corporate people to the value of the black consumer. And that was what Jesse did in his speech, which was brilliant. And I had never thought of it in that way, nor had anyone else. So I had a background of, you know, back, I was on the periphery of everything. Yeah. You know, it's so funny hearing you talk about it. And I, I guess that's, um, I realized that that's ab absolutely true because, um, uh, as I said, I was concerned, I was doing, doing the budget and concerned with, with the numbers. And um, that said, that doesn't matter. You know, we're doing, you know, get the people, order the film. Uh, we got the uh, air, airline ticket, gathered, you know, one car, that kind of business. Um, no sleep for the week because we were short crew. <laughs> Didn't matter. We were going to do this film. That's and right. um, so you're right. Oh, you're absolutely correct. That's what, that's what had happened. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to be a nosy filmmaker for a second. So who paid for the, for the airfare to get the crew of, I don't know, four or five people from New York? Mm -hmm. Who put up the money? Who, who was this? Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't and know. I don't get paid, I'm sure. But yeah, I, I, I do know <laughs> that when I saw I said, gee, Dad, this is going to cost like $35,000 of the... Uh, no, it won't cost, cost that much. It won't cost, cost that much. Um, you know, we're doing it. <laughs> you know, stop bothering me about that. Well, this, this is a racist statement, but maybe somebody hit the number. That's the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. 
Uh, I know we didn't hit, hit the number, but <laughs> somebody did. But there was um, uh, some there was some advanced um, money there. Don't get me wrong, but it was not nearly what was be needed to do the film. Not, not only that, Harry and Sydney they didn't charge for mm -hmm. it. It was it no. was that type of thing, you know. I, and, the, yeah, there's 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 one segment in this film that I, I I need to know more about the 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 footage with Queen Mother Moore. Oh yeah. Who shot that? That that is the most extraordinary exchange when when, she, when she's talking about reparations. Who 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 was responsible? Who shot that? Um, I don't remember who shot it. I think I I recorded it. Okay. Because, um, um, so I think I was on on the recorder. Could have been yeah. Dad on the camera, probably. Right. Um, if, as a matter of fact, it pro probably was. But um, yeah, Queen. That was my, my first in introduction, really, to Queen Queen Mother Mother Moore, and um, her call for reparations. And everybody, everybody else knew who what who 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 she was, and she was like a a a, a flame, and everybody came came around you know to see her. So um, uh, yeah, it was her, and there was just there was just so much um, a life there in the hotel lobby, in yeah. the hotel lobby. That, that there was um, um, meetings and talkings and old friends and come coming together and interviews. So um, in the lobby itself, there was a lot, a lot of action before we even got to the um, location for the film itself. Well, I can tell you about the press. They paid. The white people paid. Mm -hmm. It was what you do. If you want to cover something of importance, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to know. But people paid. And, mm -hmm. and, and I must say, if you saw our audience, which thanks to you guys, because your father had free reign. I mm, never yes, told him what to do. But the shots he got really gave you a much better understanding of blackness mm, at yes. that particular time that people don't understand. I felt privileged to be involved. But most of the time I spent trying to organize how we're going to get the press and they had a lot of friction from the black experience because once you realize that we had the press, television, radio from all over the world, we had to manage how to get it down into that gymnasium the next day. But they paid, it, it, people got, I'm sure the people they came from Alabama and Mississippi. They, they found a way to get there. And so I, I guess that's the other miracle. But I never saw so many press people in my life before or after it. It was the question of whether black, what black, it, it's sort of like today. That's what we're going through now. Right. Suddenly you've got white people who feel different. Mm -hmm. And what I was impressed is how many, the press was mostly white, as you remember, mm -hmm. and Gary. So what's, it seems so fitting that you're doing this at this particular time, given what's going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. that, that, that example of unity that, that that Gary represents. You're, you're absolutely right, Mr. Lewis. I mean, it, 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 it resonates with this moment, this, this necessity for, for, for unity. Um, yeah, what, what, one question. Um, it, how, and what, what is the, the, the 2020 where, uh, legacy of, of, of Gary? I mean, the, the, of the convention. What, what, how, how do we see uh, those efforts for, for unity? What, what, what is it, how is it, how has that what happened there and 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 also it was more than just a gathering they really came up with a platform and really a whole program uh how is that pro in what ways has that has that sort of carried through in time what, what 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 do we see what do we have to see what do we have to show for it that's an, inter <laughs> that's an interesting question um for me it was the fact that you have to have white people in the equation, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we had no real national black media. Uh, the truth also is 
that when white people begin to get involved, it means that you have crossed over to where decisions can be made. We, we, we really had a wonderful spirit. And the question is, what was the result, you're asking, Lewis, what was the result of the convention? That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I just think, actually, to me, suddenly there were more blacks who were mayor of the major cities, right. which, which was the immediate. So it was like um, Los Angeles and then Willie Brown and in, in, in San Francisco and certainly Newark. Chicago, Atlanta. Atlanta. I mean, you had mayors who suddenly, you know, who were not the major population in any of the city, but you began to see black people in decision-making positions. Now, whether they all came together is another matter, but I do think it brought the idea of taking political leadership into your own hands. And I also think that it, I, I can tell you that it was really, Jesse Jackson was born in that convention. Mm -hmm. uh, that that Jesse's speech was the most dramatic and powerful sermon I have ever heard. But I got to know him much better after that. Mm -hmm. And Jesse started Operation Push as a result of that. He says, you got to take the economics of the Black experience and basically do things yourself or get things done that are necessary to do. And so when Jesse ran for president, which is one of the most amazing presidential campaigns ever done, mm -hmm. we were able to sort of trail behind Jesse, but that, that caused him to run for president. Gary, that, mm -hmm. that, that is what, what, I, was what I think. And ultimately, yes, the Obama, you know, the Obamas. And, 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 and Mr. Greaves, so any, any, any we, I've gotten the, the, the time mark. Uh, any, uh, any, any final words? What, you know, what's, what's the impact of, of the film, Nation Time? What, what, what does it mean to have it released in 2020? Oh, I, I think it shows that um, b b uh, b black folks have been thinking about the, these things and working on these things and wanting to come together around these, these el elements. And we're, um, it, and to hear those kinds of very progressive uh, uh, state statements at that time, people think that um, uh, black, black folks were very uh, quiet or not not really um, political in that in, in that way. But this was a a full convention with the signs and the energy and everybody and the caucusing back and forth. It was um uh, it was the thing was that it was just a, a, a real convention of black, well, black, black folks uh, coming together and making decisions and that um, people see it now and they say, I've heard this a number of times, gee, I didn't know that kind of thing was happening back then. You know, um, I thought it was just the marching in the street. I didn't know about, you know, come, coming together, those kind of stress strategizing ses uh, sessions. And, um, and uh, Mr. Lewis is right about the Jack Jackson speech. Um, uh, we only could have some of it in, in in there. But as I said, when he when he finished that talk, no work could be done. The mm. thing was place went um, uh, <laughs> it went crazy. Just he, 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 he erupted. It just just, just erupted because he touched on he touched on. He brought in everybody. He said, uh, "Black Repub Republicans, black doctors, black this." Like that, he just brought everybody in, and uh, everybody I think, um, uh, uh, re, you know, uh, resonated. It resonated with everyone that mm -hmm. uh, he and, and included uh, uh, the whole spectrum of black people, and that we all had to come come together, as he says, uh, the was the uh, um, the common denominator. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, with, with your black black blackness. And that's what he, uh, that's, and that's, I think, is what, what, what he, he brought. And, um, and that's what made it really, for me, so, so powerful. 
Well, well, I think what I was impressed with was your father. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, he was able to get inside of all of the activities that were going on. And mm -hmm. I have to tell you, there was so much going on, you, you wouldn't believe it. And it wasn't that it was difficult. It was more than difficult. It was mm -hmm. almost impossible. I, I want to just emphasize something. After that black talent who shall be nameless left, somewhere after one o'clock in the morning, they had to cons construct, reconstruct the, uh, the gymnasium so that it could handle television. Mm -hmm. And it had to be, he had to be able to get inside these discussions on the floor. So I, I think it was your father that made the convention, if you want to know the truth, <laughs> because we basically were not organized. If you really mm -hmm. want to know the truth, we had to get it done mm -hmm. the next morning. And the people had to come and they would, like you said, they all knew each other, they were talking, but it was basically a matter of love. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, we knew your father was there, but how he got those shots, how he got inside those conversations, yes. only he could have done it. So funny, that, that, that explains why we got so little sleep during, during that. That's uh, why. I, I, um, you're bringing it back, back, back to me now. That, uh, Do you remember now? Oh, yes, yes, yes. There was little, little sleep. I remember almost go, going to sleep in the car. Well, dry. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I think we're, we're going to need to wrap, but wow. So I hope the world, and certainly all of Black America, gets to see this film. It's, it's, it's an extraordinary film for this time and this moment. Uh, really, thank you so much, uh, David Greaves. Thank you so much, Byron Lewis. Thank you. Thank you.